This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey, this is a forward of uh, The Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 4. I just wanted to make it clear that I, I completely support Israel. I've always been pro-Israel. I completely believe that they have a right to exist. They have a right to thrive. They have a right to be safe. And I've always known that both Russia and Israel are extremely brutal and ruthless when it comes to responding to attack. And it usually means one Israeli citizen killed equals an entire city block raised to the ground uh, under the assault of a uh, Apache or Cobra helicopter. So in case that's not clear, I wanted to make that forward because I speak pretty openly in the uh, next section. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm listening to... Oh, this is Chris Abraham, the Chris Abraham Show, season six, episode four. And I'm listening to news on NPR. And uh, they're calling Netanyahu an extremist. Uh, they call Trump an extremist. They call uh, everybody. Good morning. Every, they call everybody an extremist. And uh, they call people, you know, white supremacists. Or they call people anti-Semites. Or they call people Islamophobes. Or they call people jingoists and xenophobia xenophobics and they call people transphobics and and homophobics and they call people white supremacists and they make all of these names <clears throat> um uh, uh uh chauvinist etc right and this is um an important thing because if all of those things such as unhinged or conspiracy theorist or conspiracy theories or um, intolerant or bigoted or even racist or sexist or or misogynistic or uh, any of these things anti you know uh, what is it called uh, uh, Christo fascist oh I even forgot about fascist the moment that Americans let's just say Americans start feeling like they are preferring, a world under things that are called extremist, if they feel safer under things like extremism, if they feel like there is less crime in their streets or on their news, local or national, and it's associated with uh, anti-blackness, uh, um, anti-poverty, anti-homelessness, anti, uh, etc., like these words are going to start attracting people instead of instead of making people physically ill right they'll start to they won't say it i mean nobody will say it nobody will share it with their friends but they might might be looking for keywords such as unhinged or um deposed or uh humiliate i don't know however they talk about trump um they'll start searching for those words and if they start searching for those words and they find that those words signify something that they find appealing or comforting or good for their wallets, good for their homes, uh, good for their families, good for the retirement, good for the kind of food they eat, the kind of car they drive, the kind of house they live in. If they start seeing that these hostile, angry words such as fascist and Nazi uh, result in a uh, stronger law and order on the streets, fewer unhoused people in tents around their neighborhood, fewer uh, um, people who don't have their culture or speak their language on their city block, people are going to start not saying anything. They won't mention it, but they're going to start making those choices in the voting box, right? So it's a total NLP thing, right? It's a total NLP thing where you start hearing conspiracy theory so you stop and say what do they not want me to know or if someone is called unhinged you're like what does this person have to say that threatens uh, the power base of the of the establishment or if you hear uh without evidence you are like 
what are they trying to hide? Why do you need to see without evidence? Why don't you, why do you need to create an entire assault of AI generated memes and video game memes, memes, M-E-M-E-S, and other kind of uh, Hill and Knowlton-esque mirages or lies or falsities you know, there were no babies being dumped out of out of NICU uh, wards and thrown onto the floor to die. People do not carry Viagra in their rations to aggressively rape people while they're trying to. While they're, you don't st- stop and rape someone when you're trying to assault and take over territory. Uh, to the victor goes the spoils. So, I mean, in a righteous war, in a just war. You, you really don't need to lean heavily into the othering of peoples, right? You don't need to lean into the caricaturing of people so that you can dehumanize them and be willing to kill, kill them more easily. You should just be able to say, you know, like people, like theoretically, you really don't even need to uh, do anything about, you know, Putin or, or Russia or whatever, right? Like just the act of invading Ukraine should be good enough, but it's not good at all. There's constant messaging about how monstrous and animalistic and feral and disgusting and demonic and evil and people are competing. So if you keep on calling everything a war crime and it just so happens to be called war, people are just going to be like, oh, war crime. That's just your way of manipulating me about war. So they're going to start dismissing the power of what war crime means. They're going to start dismissing over what a Nazi is. They're going to start dismissing what a fascist is as hyperbole. And the moment everything is crying wolf, nobody's going to believe that there's any wolves ever, ever, ever at all. Like the best thing, I feel like the sneakiest thing that the Republican, uh, Republicans in the House have done is completely stymied the House Speaker, which means uh, in a world where Republicans say that they're small government and they believe that there's too many laws and too much money spent, it's perfect to not have a Speaker of the House because you can't make any decisions, you can't allocate money, you can't pass bills or run them up to the Senate and to the President. You can completely stymie progress under the auspices of, well, what about Trump? Well, what about, you know, uh, Jordan? What about so-and-so? So, I mean, in many ways, uh, seems to me like there's uh, a perfect plan going on, right? I mean, the uh, the government's not closed, but government closed for business. And so, you know, who knows what's going to happen next? Um, my, uh, my twin sister from another mister and another mother... Uh, asked me to make this episode about um, personal space and about putting boundaries, but I didn't do that. But I'll try to do that next time. I just don't have any ideas on the matter now. Um, I don't know, right? Like, uh, it's very interesting. So as these words become redefined, like there's something in programming, right? Something in programming where you can define a variable, right? So you can define, you can say, good equals bad. You can define um, uh, fascist equals lawful or Nazi equals Western cultural ideals, or you can make it um, unhinged. You can make that into uh, antithetical to Democrat, liberal democratic democratic principles. So people are going to start mapping their own words and they're going to associate your words of bad dog, right? Like, you know, all these words mean bad dog, bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. People had heard, you're racist, bad dog. You're Nazi, bad dog. You're a Christo-fascist, bad dog. You're a a white cisgender man, bad dog. You're a transphobe, bad, bad, bad dog. You're a, um, you're homophobic, bad dog. And then people are going to start to see, especially when they see literally progressives go against Israelis, support Palestinians, which is countercultural to um, our Judeo-Christian American tradition, 
and we're going to you're going to start to see that like the same frustrations in the world that nationalist populists have are the same frustrations that that um i don't know progressive national progressive populists have so you're going to realize that anybody that falls outside of the authoritarian i don't know the over the um uh the mainstream narrative the the push narrative uh, the liberal democratic ideology and ideal anything that pushes against it gets canceled right so you don't only have to be a january 6 right-wing extremist uh to you know end up in jail or have your have your entire career ruined you can be a populist leftist a progressive populist leftist and if you sign a letter that says um that that damns israel for its treatment of uh of palestine palestinians gaza and hamas which is of course you know i mean nobody says it right it's an one cannot talk about the fact that by definition uh gaza is a world war ii-esque jewish ghetto but instead of jews there's semites in there don't forget muslims are semites so why are the jews why are the people of israel why are the jewish people maintaining this ghetto of people who are oppressed and who are being threatened endlessly with uh ethnic cleansing so so what happens right like it's not just what when i keep on saying is any law is made to crush right-wing extremism through laws, through judges, through precedents, will be levied against anybody who counteracts or countermands uh, an establishment belief in who's good and who's bad, uh, to the point where everybody from Harvard who signed a letter saying that they don't support, that they support Palestine, Palestine justice, are now being completely doxxed and will never have a career in business, finance, law, and probably even medicine. So that's happening. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm at the farmer's market. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.